The Kraft Foods Company, makers of Kraft Quality Foods, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. There are many cheese foods on the market today, but only one Pabstet. The delicately different pasteurized processed cheese food with that real cheddar flavor. Try Pabstet, and your taste will tell you what we mean when we say it's deliciously different. For that rich, satisfying Pabstet flavor comes from AIDS cheddar cheese of real distinction. You can get Pabstet, Pimento, or Golden in the round handy size package. But chances are that once you've tried it, you want to save money by buying the economical two-pound loaf. Your dealer has both packages. Ask for Pab Step tomorrow. Well, it's the family's night out at the great Gildersleeve's house. His nephew, Leroy, took off for the library. His niece, Marjorie, just went out the door with her fiancé, Bronco Thompson. And now the great man himself takes his leave and heads down the front steps. Hmm. Night air smells good. Uh, hmm. Somebody's cooking sauerkraut. <laughs> uh, Bronco's car always exploding. I'll bet that boy doesn't use a starter on that car. He just lights a fuse. <laughs> Uh, yes, Marjorie. Uh, can we give you a ride, Mr. Gildersleeve? Ride? No, Bronco. I'm just going down to the bowling alley. Makes a person healthy to walk, you know. <laughs> healthy than riding in that jalopy. <laughs> oh, come on, Unky. We're going to the movies. We can drop you off. No, I'll walk. Oh, why not, Mr. Gildersleeve? There's plenty of room. You haven't ridden in my car since I put the floorboards in it. Yeah. <laughs> come on, Unky. Be sociable. Well, all right. The door is welded shut. You just step over. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Pretty tight squeeze. Getting under this top and over the door. Zeef. Should have left the floorboards out. It'd have been easier to crawl in through the bottom. <laughs> <sighs> All set, Mr. Gildersleeve? Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> Are you going bowling tonight, Unky? Yeah, I'm going bowling if I ever get there. <laughs> I'm going to meet Judge Hooker, knock over a few pins. Marge and I are going to a movie. Well, good. Uh, I guess you children are pretty happy these days. I'll say we are. Aren't we, Marge? Oh, yes, it's wonderful. Yes. Well, I imagine after you're married, you'll be getting another car, eh, Bronco? Oh, no. We're going to keep this one until I can afford to buy a new one. We're not going to lose our heads, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, it won't take us long to save the money, though. I'm going to find a job. What did you say, Marjorie? I said I was going to get a job after we're married. Well, that's something you can talk about later. <laughs> oh, no, it isn't, Mr. Gildersleeve. This is something we have to talk about right now. This is important to our future. Yes, well... A girl can't work and be married at the same time. Why, Bronco Thompson, why, that's the most idiotic, old-fashioned idea I've ever heard. Now, we... A don't... woman's place is in the home, isn't it, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well... But don't be so stuffy. Why, when people are first married, there's no reason why the wife shouldn't work, is there, Unky? Well... well what do you say, Mr. Gildersleeve? <laughs> yes, tell him, Unky. Just a minute. Don't get me into this. Well, don't think I'm being stubborn. But after we're married, I'm going to put my foot down. Oh, is that so, Mr. Thompson? Well, I'm going to put my foot down. Well, if everybody's putting a foot down, somebody put one on the brake. We just passed the bowling alley. <laughs> I'll get out here and walk back. Now, you children forget your little argument, huh? If they say it'll all come out in the wash. <laughs> Take me home, Mr. Thompson. <laughs> Looks like this one's stuck in the ringer. <laughs> now, where's Judge Hooker? Well, 
There's the girls' team from the shirt factory. Cute uniforms. Well, hello, Gildy. Uh, oh, hello, Horace. I'm ready and waiting, old friend. I should warn you, Gildy, I'm going to be in rare form tonight. Yeah, all right, Judge. When I get hold of that ball, I'm going to make those pins fly like thistle down in the breeze. <laughs> <laughs> Thistle down. Judge, you'll be lucky if you can roll the ball to one end of the alley. Too bad we couldn't have a foursome. I thought perhaps Bronco and Marjorie might decide to join us this evening. No, Judge. Bronco and Marjorie are having a little spat. Oh, what a shame. A lover's quarrel. Yeah. But you know what they say, Gildy. A little quarrel, a little tear. That's the spice that seasons the pot. Yeah, yes. <laughs> What's quarrel about, Gildy? Well, Marjorie insists she's going to get a job after they're married, and Bronco says she isn't. Stubborn kids. Well, well. What's your opinion, Gildy? I'm staying out of it, Judge. They can figure it out for themselves. I don't know. These days, I feel it's quite practical for a young wife to pitch in and help out with the finances. Oh? Uh-huh. A lot you know about it, Horace. A wife's place is in the home. How do you know? It, never mind. <laughs> Bronco's right, though. A wife can't be running down to a job every morning and still make a home. I thought you weren't taking sides in this argument, Gildy. Well, by George, somebody's got to show a little sense. This thing could ruin their whole marriage. You're going to save it, I suppose. Well, I may have to. When two people are as stubborn as Bronco and Marjorie, they need a balance wheel. Somebody to straighten them out. Oh, yes, of course. Well, come on, balance wheel. Let's roll over to the alleys. (laughs) I don't know, Judge. The more I think about this, the more I'm convinced I should be at home with Bronco and Marjorie. But, Gildy... Don't you tempt me, Judge. This is their first quarrel. They need the sympathy and wisdom of an older person. But, Gildy, who am I going to bowl with? Well, you could go over and join the girls from the shirt factory, Judge. (laughs) They haven't got a mascot. Maybe they could use an old goat. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. There's Bronco and Marjorie in the parlor, sitting on opposite sides of the room. Gildersleeve, you got here just in time. Better not barge in the front door, though. I'll go around and duck in through the kitchen. Hello, Bertie. Oh, you home already, Mr. Gildersleeve? I thought you was down bowling with Judge Hooker. Well, I was, Bertie, but I felt that under the circumstances, I ought to be at home. How are things in the parlor, Bertie? I don't know. I turned the heat up, but it's still pretty chilly in there. <laughs> you back, Unc? What happened? Nothing, Leroy. I simply came home. There are times when the head of the household needs to be on hand, when the skipper has to stand at the helm. Holy smoke, what's going on around here? Bronco and Marjorie are sitting in there like a couple of mummies. They aren't even talking. You keep out of there, my boy. Aren't they speaking to each other at all, Bertie? No, sir. They come in and set. They've been sitting ever since. <laughs> they got a mad on about something. Why don't they fight? Leroy? <laughs> this is serious, Bertie. This could break up everything. Nah, leave them alone, Mr. Gillsleeve. They'll be billing and cooing again before you know it. That's what you think, Bertie. You going in there, Mr. Gillsleeve? I most certainly am. A calm, cool head, a gentle, sympathetic, and understanding attitude is the only thing that can straighten this out. Okay. You want to take along something to thaw out that atmosphere? Hot chocolate? It, no, Bertie. I'll take some. Leroy? <laughs> you go down to the basement. No, for corn's sake. Bertie, what this needs is tact and mature judgment. Now, you watch. I'll have this thing smoothed over in five minutes. Yes, sir. I'll break off a sprig of this pot of geranium to take in with me. What's that for, Miss Gilsey? It's an olive branch, Bertie. The symbol of peace. Kind of a cute idea. Yes, sir. Well, hello, children. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Uncle Mort. Look here, children. See what I'm carrying? Why the geranium? Well, it's not really a geranium. It's an olive branch. <laughs> oh. Well, that fell flat. <laughs> Mind if I sit down? No. No? Uh... uh... Pretty cold out. Nice in here, though. Hmm. How to begin? Maybe I'll just laugh it off, and they laugh too. Sure. You know that was a very funny argument you children got into. The wife working, 
I laughed so hard I had to come home. <laughs> they didn't laugh. How's Judge Hooker? It, oh, he's fine. <laughs> Your mother and father well, Bronco? Yes, they're well. Good. About this little difference between you and Marjorie. What's little about it? <clears throat> well, we shouldn't let these things upset us too much. We have to give and take, you know. <laughs> I'm willing to give, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I'm not going to take money from my wife. If a man can't provide the necessities of the home, then he has no business getting married. There he goes again. Watch it, Marjorie. Why does a man have to think he's so high and mighty? Why does a girl have to stay home and wait for a husband to make the money? What am I going to be, a cook, a dishwasher, a carpet sweeper? I didn't say anything about you being a cook and a carpet sweeper. Now wait, take it easy. <laughs> What's a girl supposed to do, sit at home like a bump on a log? Oh, for... What do other women do all day? They have jobs. Oh, no, they don't. Oh, we're right back where they started. <laughs> now look, children, let's be reasonable. Well, I'm being reasonable. There's a way to work this thing out. Find a middle road, a compromise. Well, I want to do the right thing, Mr. Gildersleeve. I know you do, Bronco. Well, so do I, Uncle. Sure you do. <laughs> I've got him. Gildersleeve, you're a born diplomat. <laughs> There's a way to figure this out, and I'll cooperate. Sure. Well, I'm not going to be stubborn, Bronco. <sighs> she called him Bronco. It's going great. <laughs> well, I'd do anything for you, Marge. You know that. I did it. They're lovebirds again. <laughs> well, I wouldn't do anything you didn't want me to do, Bronco. Isn't that sweet? Do you think a wife should work, Unky? No. Why not? <laughs> well, my dear, it's the woman's place to make the home. Have dinner ready when her husband comes home from work. Oh, a wife is just a cook, is that it? I didn't say that. But that's what you meant. No, I didn't. What's wrong with cooking? Yes. I mean, no. <laughs> But Marjorie... Go ahead, take Bronco's side, stick together. I'm through with men, I'm through with you, Bronco. Now, wait a minute. And you too, Auntie. Oh. Good night, both of you. I guess I'll be going. Good night, Mr. Gildersleeve. Mar... Bronco... Now I have done it. Gildersleeve, a fine peacemaker you turned out to be. Olive Branch. Tss. Poison Ivy. The great Gildersleeve will return to his problems in just a minute. Do you like hot sandwiches that are a whole meal in themselves? Then here's a suggestion you'll really go for. Grilled sandwiches, have step. Wait till you try one. Just spread slices of bread with rich, smooth-spreading Pabstet cheese food. Cover with another slice of bread sandwich fashion. Fry in butter or margarine on both sides. Serve golden brown and piping hot with marmalade, jam, or honey. Mmm, mmm, is it delicious. For Pabstet is the pasteurized processed cheese food whose rich, satisfying flavor comes from genuine aged cheddar cheese of real distinction. You'll love Pabstet for every use. It's mild, spreads readily at room temperatures, melts smoothly into sauces, cuts into firm wedges when chilled, and it adds distinctive cheddar flavor to every sandwich, salad, omelet, or casserole dish you make with cheese. Get Pabstet tomorrow from your grocer in the handy-sized round packages or the economical two-pound loaf. Well, the great Gildersleeve's noble effort to patch up the quarrel between Bronco and Marjorie didn't work out too well. In fact, the great man is worse off than he was before. Now he has Marjorie mad at him, too. Never again. They can fight till the cows come home. I'll never open my big mouth. Breakfast! <laughs> Breakfast! Oh, you coming, Miss Gildersleeve? How come you didn't answer? I'm not taking any chances, Bertie. From now on, I'm saying nothing around here. And I think that's good advice for everybody. Yes, sir. Good morning, Marjorie. Good morning. 
<sighs> what a family. <laughs> Nobody says anything. I have to talk to myself. That's a good way to stay out of trouble. You and Bronco are still battling, Marge? I prefer not to discuss it, if you don't mind. Stick to your rhubarb, my boy. Yeah. <laughs> so quiet, it gives me the creeps. Hey, is it okay if I scrape my toast? In the kitchen. <laughs> Uh, 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 Mr. Gilsley. Huh? What is this? A note? Who's it from? Me. Yeah. <laughs> what does it say? Dear Mr. Gildersleeve, would you like some hot coffee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bertie. Yes. Uh, fine breakfast. Marjorie, this is ridiculous. When is Bronco coming over again? Tonight, he says. Well, for heaven's sake, stop this silly quarrel. You're acting like infants. Are we? Oh. He's going to keep his mouth shut, but he doesn't do it. Leroy! I'm talking to myself! <laughs> I'm going downtown. I'll see you children later. Goodbye, Marjorie. Marjorie, I said goodbye. <laughs> An outcast from my own family. Guess I'll go down to Peavy's and get a strong cigar and smoke it at both ends. <laughs> hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> What can I do for you this morning? Give me a couple of cigars, Peavy. The long ones. Very well. <laughs> celebrating today, are you, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, Peavy. Now that you mention it, maybe I should celebrate. I've learned a valuable lesson. Oh? You bet. I've learned to never take sides in an argument. My, my. It's a fact, Peavy. No matter what the situation is, a man should keep his opinions to himself. Yes, I know. I learned that from Mrs. Peavy. Uh. <laughs> Marjorie and Bronco are having a big quarrel. She wants to get a job after they're married, but I've washed my hands of the whole thing. I'm out of it. You don't say. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Marjorie thinks more of getting a job than she does of her marriage. It's all right with me. How do you feel about it, Peavy? Oh, it's all right with me, too. <laughs> the trouble with you, Peavy, is you've never had a daughter. Believe me, if you had, you'd sing a different tune. How'd that? Well, if you had a niece like Marjorie, who was the same as a daughter to you, suppose she wanted to work after she was married instead of settling down and making a home. How would you feel? Well, I'd say it would, it would all depend. Wouldn't you try to put a little sense into her head? Well, maybe I would, and maybe I wouldn't. You mean you'd stand by and let her ruin her marriage? Well, it all depends. Oh, <laughs> get off the fence, Peavy. Take one side or the other. Is that what you did? You bet it is. I'll stay on the fence. <laughs> Give me my cigars, Peavy. There you are. And come in again, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, maybe I will and maybe I won't. <laughs> I knew I'd think of a clever answer. <laughs> Oh, wish I could get my mind on going to the water department. Why does Marjorie have to be so stubborn? Uh, women are a problem. Wonder if Katie's home. Won't do any harm to drive by there and see. Yep, that's her car in front of her house. Katie's little convertible. won't mind if I stop in for a minute. At a time like this, a man should talk to a nurse. It's the next best thing to a doctor. <laughs> Better in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder if Katie's up yet. Sure, she's an early bird. Little Catherine. Sympathetic, understanding. Never seen her early in the morning. Bet she's pretty. Bright-eyed, sparkling like a rose in the morning dew. 
Yes? Is Catherine here? Oop, it is Catherine. <laughs> Who is it? Hasn't got her eyes open yet. It's me, Catherine Throckmorton. Throckmorton? Oh, Throckmorton. Yeah. <laughs> I was just driving by, I thought I'd stop in and say hello. Could you come back in about an hour? Well, I'd like to talk to you now, uh, Catherine. It's very important. All right, come on in. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. I'm outside. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Come on in. Uh, thank you. <sighs> what is it? What happened? Well, I need somebody to talk to, Catherine. I'm a lost sheep. Who is? Me. Oh. Everybody's against me, Catherine. Marjorie and Bronco are having their first quarrel, and I'm right in the middle. Oh, what's it about? Well, Marjorie insists she's going to work after they're married, Catherine. Libel upset everything. I knew you'd understand, Catherine. Oh, yes, I understand. Yeah, I knew you would. I think Marjorie's right. What? Why shouldn't she work if she wants to? But... It'll give her confidence. Let her feel that she's helping. After all, marriage is a sharing of responsibility. Two people should cooperate and build together. You're intelligent enough to know that? Sure, that's exactly the way I feel about it. <laughs> well, I'm glad. The average man is just the opposite. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm just not an average man. <laughs> so, Marjorie's very lucky to have you for an uncle. Mm, I'm certainly glad I came over here. <laughs> Is that you, Mr. Gillsleeve? Yeah. Uh, how is everything, Bertie? Well, Mr. Bronco's in the parlor, and Miss Marge is in there, too. Ain't nobody walked out yet. Good. <laughs> I thought it'd be better if I ate dinner downtown tonight, Bertie. It'd give Marjorie a chance to cool off a little. <laughs> I don't see how she can get much cooler than she is. She didn't eat no dinner, Mr. Gillsleeve. Well, let's not worry about it, Bertie. I ain't worried. You worried, Miss Gillsleeve? No. Shh. Listen. Are they talking in the parlor? No, nope, that's Leroy and Piggy down in the basement. Uh -huh. Have they been talking? No, sir. When Mr. Bronco came, he said hello. And Miss Marjorie said good evening. And they ain't said nothing since. <laughs> hmm. uh. Mr. Bronco's leaning on the mantel and Miss Marjorie's sitting on a piano stool. It's a deadlock. <laughs> <laughs> and that Bronco, why does that boy have to be so stubborn? Come again. Well, I've been thinking about this, Bertie. Marjorie's right. There's no reason why a girl shouldn't work after she's married if she wants to. Yes, sir. Girl ought to feel she's helping. Marriage is a um, sharing of responsibility. Two people should cooperate and build together. Yes, sir. Besides, I have to be loyal to Marjorie. I don't blame her for getting upset with me. The least a girl can expect is the backing of her own family. You going in there again, Mr. Gilsley? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it looks like I'll have to, Bertie. I took the wrong approach before. Bronco will see it my way. You want another hunk of geranium? <laughs> no, Bertie, I'm going in there this time as Marjorie's uncle. A friendly counselor. At least I'll win Marjorie back. I don't have to live with that Bronco. No, sir. Maybe I should have something to carry, though. Give me a reason for going in. You could take this box of chocolates. Mr. Bronco brought them last night. Hey, that's an idea. Hmm. Milk chocolate. Huh? Blums. Open the door, Bertie. Yes, yeah, sir. Good luck. <laughs> well, hello, children. Hello, Uncle Mort. Good evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Found some candy in the kitchen. Some of yours, Bronco. Have some, Marjorie? Sweets to the sweet. <laughs> no, thank you. Hmm. Bronco? No, thank you. Oh, well, I guess I'll have one myself. Mmm, peanut clusters. That's very good, Bronco. Thank you. <laughs> have you children made up after your silly spat? Now, that was a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see now, whose side am I on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Marjorie, I've been doing quite a bit of thinking. Really? Yep. That's nice. It's entirely possible that you're right. It might be a very good thing for you to work a while after you're married. Well, thank you, Unky. 
I'm glad somebody's showing a little sense. Did you hear what Uncle Mort said, Bronco? Yes, I heard it, Marge. <laughs> now, Bronco, <laughs> let's try to have an open mind. You'll have to admit, my boy, you've been a little selfish about this thing. What? Well, maybe I have. What did you say, Uncle Mort? Huh? Uh, I simply said, my dear, that Bronco had the wrong attitude. Uncle Mort, I resent that. What? Bronco was only standing up for what he thought was right. Yes, but... And how do you know? Maybe he is right. But Marjorie... Everybody picks on poor Bronco. No, wait a minute. Don't cry, Marge, honey. Oh, Bronco, everybody's so mean to you. Look, I was only trying... It's all right, Marge. Children. Well, excuse you, Uncle Mort. Excuse... Oh, for good... Come on, Marge, let's go to the movie. My car's out in front. All right, honey. Uh... Can we give you a ride, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, thanks. I've just had one. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be right back. When you do your shopping tomorrow... Remember to add a treat for the whole family to your shopping list. Get Pabstet, the pasteurized processed cheese food with the real cheddar flavor. You can get golden or pimento Pabstet in a round, handy-sized package. But once you've seen how much your family likes this delicious cheese food and how many delicious ways there are to use it in your cooking, you'll want to save money next time by getting the economical two-pound loaf. In either package, you get that superb Pabstet flavor that comes from genuine AIDS cheddar cheese of real distinction. Ask your grocer for Pabstet tomorrow. Leroy! I'm down here, Uncle. And where is down here? In the basement. Huh? What are you doing? I'm making a tent. A tent? <clears throat> Better have a look at that. It's a king one, Uncle. Look here, it's going to have a flap in the front and a flap in the back. Yeah, well, that's nice. Lots of flaps. <laughs> Our Boy Scout troop is having a big show this week. We're all making stuff. Well, good. This week is the 40th anniversary of the Boy Scouts, Unc. Huh? 40 years. That means they had Boy Scouts before you were born. Yeah. <laughs> well, almost. <laughs> what a likable little fellow. <laughs> you know something, Unc? There's more than 2,300,000 kids and grown-ups in the Boy Scout organization. Really? You bet. It's a keen thing for kids. You're right, my boy. The Scouts are doing a fine job all over the world, teaching boys to think straight and be straight. They deserve all the help we can give them, folks. Let's wish them well on their 40th anniversary and do all we can to assure them many successful years to come. Good night. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. Incidentally, Mr. Perry will be heard next Saturday over NBC in a program honoring the Boy Scouts of America. This show was written by Paul West, John Elliott, and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Kathy Lewis, Dick Crenna, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. This is Jay Stewart saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good night. Want to put magic in leftover meals? Then have plenty of Kraft prepared mustard on hand. Mustard makes hidden flavors pop right out of leftover meats, adds new life to salad or egg dishes. You can get two kinds of Kraft prepared mustard, you know. Salad mustard, mild, delicately spiced, or craft mustard with snappy horseradish added. Have both on hand, for when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get craft prepared mustard. Break the Bank, radio's biggest money-paying show, is next on NBC.